Hello and welcome to Introduction to 3D Printing. This is the first part in a four-part series as presented by the Integrated Teaching and Learning Program here at CU Boulder. In part one of the workshop, you're going to learn about an overview of 3D printing and what other equipment we have available to you. My name is Rachel. I'm an engineer for the ITL program, but I'll also be here to guide you through this self-paced introduction to 3D printing workshop. So if you're ready, let's get started. This 3D printing workshop will consist of slides, screen shares of software, and hardware close-ups to ensure that you're ready to run our printers by the end of this workshop. Before we get rocking and rolling, I just want to mention that all slides for this workshop will be available at itlp.colorado.edu. Note that these slides will be slightly different than this recorded workshop, but they'll be a great reference in addition to the cheat sheets if you'd like to look at these later when you're ready to run your print. In this four-part series, we'll be covering four key concepts. In this first part, we'll do a 3D printing overview, what 3D printing is and when to use it. In part two, we'll dive into our self-service 3D printers, beginning with how to prepare 3D files for Cura, the slicing software that communicates with the printers. In part three, we'll continue with the self-service printers and learn how to prepare the machine and start your print. And finally, in part four, we'll talk about our staff run high definition 3D printers and how you can get parts run on those. What is 3D printing? Put simply, 3D printing is a process by which a machine takes a digital model and produces that model as a solid object. Now there's a collection of 3D printing technologies, but the ways they differ is primarily in the way layers are built to create an object. Some, like the one I'm showing, use the melting or softening of materials to extrude layers, such as this Lulzbot Taz 6 is. This is actually one of our self-service 3D printers. Others cure photoreactive resins with a UV laser, such as our Form 3 does, one of our high-definition 3D printers. The one thing they all have in common? They're all subsets of a process known as additive manufacturing. A process by which you grow a three-dimensional object one super fine layer at a time, each layer bonding to the preceding layer. Now that you have a basic idea of how 3D printing works, can you think of any benefits of 3D printing a part as opposed to machining or injection molding it? I'll pause to give you a few moments to think about it. How about a reduction in time or cost, or the ability to produce a highly detailed object with relatively little effort on your end? When it comes to rapid prototyping, a process in which you want to design, test, and iterate as quickly as possible, this is a very powerful tool because you can produce something in a matter of days or hours as opposed to weeks when it comes to manufacturing something. Within the ITL laboratory, we have 10 Lulzbot machines that you run and three high definition 3D printing machines that our student staff members run for you. And while these printers are great, it's important to keep in mind, just as with any manufacturing process, that 3D printing has its limitations. So the question becomes, to 3D print or not to 3D print? <laughs> For example, when it comes to our Lulzbot 3D printers, these are going to be great for producing detailed parts relatively quickly and at a low cost. However, when it comes to producing high precision or uh, tight tolerance parts, this is going to be problematic because these Lulzbot 3D printers um, produce parts layer by layer and each layer is presenting an opportunity for inaccuracy. So I'd like to take a moment to introduce you to a few other tools and technologies we have here at the ITL laboratory so you can make an informed decision about which process is going to be best for producing your part. So when it comes to rapid prototyping, 
we have laser cutters, four in total, which cut 2D sheets of material with a laser. These are great when you're trying to build things that have a bunch of large flat surfaces, such as encasements or enclosures, or when, when you want to engrave text or images. Then we have a vacuum forming machine, which takes a thin sheet of plastic and it wraps it around an object using heat and suctioning. Vacuum forming machine can be great when you're wanting to cover or enclose an object, but when you don't care too much about structural integrity. Then finally, we have the entire manufacturing center, both a metal and woodworking side. And this can be great for your polished prototypes or your final models. And when you're looking for things with uh, you know, more robust mechanical properties or when size is a constraint and it won't fit on the build plate of a 3D printer. So keep these in mind as you begin 3D printing. This concludes the first part of our self-paced introduction to 3D printing workshop. Join me as you'll learn about how to operate our self-service 3D printers in the next section of this workshop. Thank you for joining and see you next time.